Welcome to Electron Line. In this case, we have a block on an incline, and the block is being pushed by an applied force F, and the force is efficient to move the block upward at a constant speed, which means that the component of the force in the horizontal direction, that would be F times D, this is the angle theta, that would be F times the cosine of theta. This component is sufficient to overcome the mg sine theta component of the weight and the friction force down here. Now the friction force that's pushing in this direction that's going to be equal to the normal force times mu sub k and so we can say that the f cosine theta is equal to mg sine theta plus the kinetic friction force caused by the weight of the block pushing down on the surface all right, how do we do that? How do we find the applied force and how do we find the reaction force right here that's caused by the weight of the block and the friction force? Well, let's see here. Again, I think the easiest way would be to draw a triangle. We're going to draw a triangle where we have the vertical force here. That's going to be the weight of the block, mg, which is equal to 100 newtons. Then we have the applied force, F, which is one of the unknowns, and then we have the reaction force, R. Notice the angle here relative to the vertical is going to be the sum of these two. That's going to be theta plus phi, which means, again, like we have done before, we need to find the angle phi, assuming that we know the angle theta. And put that down here. Let's say that's equal to 25 degrees for the angle theta. So we need to find the angle phi. We need to use this right triangle right here. Notice we can use the tangent of phi. The tangent of phi, by definition, is the ratio of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. In this case, the opposite side will be the friction force, which is the normal force times mu sub k and the adjacent side is going to be the normal force. And then notice the normal force cancels out, and we have the tangent of phi, in this case, is equal to the kinetic coefficient of friction, or phi is equal to the inverse tangent of the kinetic coefficient of friction, which in this case is 0 0.25, so we're looking for phi to be equal to the arctangent of 0 0.25. Now we need a calculator. 0.25, take the inverse tangent, and we get 14.036 degrees. Phi equals 14.036 degrees. I'm keeping a few extra decimal places so I don't have a round-off error, which means that theta plus phi is equal to 25 degrees plus 14.036 degrees, which is 39.036 degrees. So that's the combined angle of theta plus phi. Once we have that angle, it becomes really easy to solve for this. Now, to make it easier, let's say that this is equal to alpha. So we're going to call alpha the sum of these two angles. I'm going to use the cosine of alpha and the tangent of alpha. I can say that the cosine of alpha, which is the sum of these two angles, which is equal to this right here, so that this is equal to alpha, is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, which means that the cosine of alpha is equal to the adjacent side, which is 100 newtons, divided by the hypotenuse, which is R, R being the reaction force, which means the reaction force R is equal to 100 newtons, divided by the cosine of alpha, or 100 newtons divided by the cosine of 39.036 degrees. And so the reaction force is equal to, uh, let's see, plus 25, take the cosine of that, take the inverse, and multiply times 100 newtons, and the reaction force will be equal to 128.7, yeah, 0.7 newtons. All right, so there's a reaction force. Now we need to find the applied force F. We're going to use a tangent. The tangent of alpha is equal to the ratio of the opposite side divided by the 
adjacent side or the tangent of alpha is equal to the opposite side is F and the adjacent side is the weight or 100 newtons which means that F is equal to 100 newtons times the tangent of alpha which is equal to 39.036 degrees all right 39.036 take the tangent of that and multiply that times 100 and I get the applied force is equal to 81.1 newtons so that gives me the reaction force and the applied force rather quickly using this technique it just moves much faster and that's how it's done